Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest narration of the web series, The Nature of Predators. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Memory Transcription Subject, Captain Sovereign, United Nations Fleet Command. Date, Standardized Human Time, February 21st, 2137. Tyler attempted to slam the door in my face, but I drove my shoulder into it with force that could only stem from passion. The memories of stabbing my claws into an oxal's neck on Sinus while trying to save myself were fresh. Everything that had gone wrong in my life started and ended with Grays. The reason I talked to the kind-hearted human was because I equated Earth's sapient predators with these child-eating reptilian abominations. My daughter's screams as she was eaten alive echoed in my ears, an uncontrollable hatred blacked out any judgment. What the fuck are you doing here? You're only authorized to accompany Hunter, Tyler exclaimed. The blonde human made a move to intercept me, but I ducked under his grasp. The ox or at the table hadn't reacted to defend itself, and it looked more alarmed than ferocious. I could see Terran playing cards on the table in front of it. How could Tyler, my friend, have been indulging in a game with these savages? The two primates who were duped into bringing me here drew their weapons, though Officer Cordona urged them to stand down. Just as I came within striking distance of the grey, shadows flashed in my periphery. A massive, scarred oxal tackled me away from the one at the table, a growl rumbling in his throat. It had a clear opportunity for a death blow, but it had purposely not driven its claws into my flesh. Rather than pinning me with its superior weight, it released its grip and gestured for me to stand. The beast's body tilted forwards, arms raised in a fighting stance. It baffled me why it hadn't used its bangs to draw my blood. Was it toying with the prey that wandered into its den? Stand down, humans, the oxal barked. I can handle myself. Captain Sovlin, we have not met before, yes? I am the one you want, not Viseth. She was born long before any war or atrocities happened. And a jar door informed me that this newcomer predator had burst in from the observation room where a recognizable human face was watching the scene unfold. It was Secretary General of the United Nations himself, giving a filthy monster a tour fresh off the summit. Zhao looked silently livid, striding into the room in a hurried attempt to defuse the situation. The name the Terran referred to the Grey Demon as was Isiv, which rang a bell. The primates were consorting with Chief Hunter that terrorized Gojids, forgetting all of its sins because it saved Earth. This ugly bastard is directly responsible for Hannah's fate. I'm gonna rend it from limb to limb. It's underestimates just how much I want it dead. Weisworth stood from the table, lashing its tail. Why don't we talk about whatever the issue is? It's dishonorable to trade claws without provocation. Besides, I would love a chance to speak with an alien other than... The leaf leakers do not see you as a worth talking to. We're monsters that deserve death to them, is a hissed. With what the Oxal have become now, I can understand where they're coming from. I never would have imagined we'd, uh, eat and torture people. That's something that's burdened me my entire life. Why do you think I'm letting Sovereign have a swing at me? I do not need outside assistance, which would make me look weak. Go on, Gojit. Do your worst. My bones ached from the force of the tackle, but I stood with renewed determination. This Oxal was mocking me, assuming I couldn't scratch it. The Terrans were foolish if they bought this mechanical stage profession of guilt from the monster that led the raids. I shrieked, swiped straight at Isif's eyes. Its tail hooked around my leg while I was mid-swing and sent me crashing to my rump. It waited with patience, heartless eyes facing me as cold slits. My spines bristled, sickened by the predatory visage. Isif seemed to be treating the skirmish as a recreation. The glint in its eyes reminded me of how Tyler looked, playing his murderous video games. In my youth, my movements might have been a bit more spry, but my ankles were throbbing from the tail swipe. I could acknowledge that the monster had a grasp on its hunger, enough to calculate and wait rather than act in a frenzy. This necessitated a more measured response on my part, despite the fog of fury spurring me onwards. Lost your nerve already, the chief hunter prompted. I raised my claws in defiance. Bloodthirsty, rotten, unfeeling fiend. I want you dead. Dead as a fecking children you ate alive. You stole my family. Creeping forward with purposeful steps, I kept all the arcs or offensive weapons in my peripheral vision. It had to keep its repulsive pupils focused on me, which made it obvious where it was looking. When its gaze flicked downward, I hopped over the blistering tail sweep that followed. 
The grey balanced itself, swinging an arm at my head. I landed just in time to duck and pop back up and swipe its snout. Crimson red blood, the same iron-rich colour as the humans, spurted from its nostrils. The UN soldiers looked ready to intervene, treacherously worried when I drew the grey's blood. Stop attacking Isif at once! That's an order, Sovlin! Zhao growled, his own brown eyes narrowed in predatory fashion. I darted out of Isif's range, daring him to come to me. Beck you! The greys are animals! Existential threats! This is why you weren't supposed to know any of this, Tyler shouted. You can't control yourself or be trusted with any info involving the Arxor. The Federation started all of this. We can prove they weren't always like this. I don't care! You have never understood how they deserve to writhe. Their words, their past, they're supposed to change of heart. It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. This have bared its savage fangs, instruments of death, which evolved for the sole purpose of dissecting sinew and crunching bone. The monster pounced towards me, jawed was wide open. The terror of being eaten made me slow to react. Disgusted by the carnivores gaping more, revealing the accrual of filthy drool. Its teeth were impossibly sharp, digging into my throat with painful force. The grey was applying the maximum pressure it could without puncturing my vulnerable flesh. It relaxed its grip for a moment, long enough to throw me into a pin on the ground. Its fangs were then back in my throat, bringing my prey instincts to full-fledged panic. The last of my control poured into not blading, which would risk Issa piercing my neck. The chemical surge was blinding hysteria. Sensory input was nauseating, with the reeking predator grasping me within its fangs like a meal. I didn't want to die the way my daughter had, dissected in a slow fashion to savor the cruelty. The Arxor were evil creatures incapable of containing their hunger, and this moment proved it. Despite all of this, the idle humans were watching, as if they thought the scene was within acceptable limits of behavior. Perhaps they were scared to interfere with the Grey's catch. Or perhaps I was wrong to trust their benevolence. Wasn't I always worried about Terrans siding with the Arxor over us? Was all their secrecy because they're throwing us to the greys, colluding with Isip above creatures with any redeeming features? Isip placed an uncanny eye inches away from mine. I do not want to hurt you. If I did, we would not be having this conversation. Are you understanding my words yet? An Arxor knows when they've been bested. When to admit defeat? Kill me, you fecking m -m monster! A stutter lapsed in my voice from the dizzying pull of adrenaline, but I clung to my hatred in the face of certain death. Savor the act, like the predator you are! It can feel good to engage in acts of aggression, but I derive no pleasure from needless suffering. Survival is not a choice. It is an imperative commanded by biology outside our control. The societal confines under the dominion mandated horrible actions. Evil is not natural, it is gradual, hardened by time and burst of ideas. It is a phenomenon of sapience, not predation. Only predators eat people. You uh, lost the right to call yourself sapient when the first child's carcass you munched on. I uh, am sorry for every meal that I had. I had no choice. So while objective fault cannot be assigned in such circumstances, my conscience assigns guilt all the same. It is unforgivable. That's why you must die, scum. Were I not vital to the efforts of all peaceful future, I would agree with your assessment. By your own words about the right to be deemed sapient, Vysith has lost her status. She never ate any creature of so funds in her life. She was rescued from the archives, and her people might as well have been a different species. They welcomed you, as the humans would have. And like humanity, their civilians were killed for it. Direct your anger at me. The Arxor, for an unfathomable reason, opened its jaws and allowed me to crawl away on the floor. Why would it spare defenseless prey, when it could literally taste my flesh on its tongue? Perhaps it was deceiving the humans, who clearly trusted it enough to let it place its gross, chipped fangs on my throat. It had more control than I anticipated from a vile grey, but I didn't buy for one second that their species was different in the past. The Federation brought out the viciousness that there was existing inclination, no worthwhile race could have hunted other civilizations like they had. The UN soldier bound my wrists as though I were the criminal. Tyler and Zal both stared at me with disapproval. While I had disobeyed direct orders and trespassed, it had proven that their secret actions were reprehensible. 
It was tough to believe that they pulled Viseth from a cryopod and deemed it ethical to keep an ancient oxal out of my purview. I risked my life on that mission to help the Earthlings. I had the same right to know as anyone else. The humans crafted too many excuses for the Grey's behavior, and their continued cooperation with these tormentors was unacceptable. Tyler breathed a flustered sigh. I was supposed to keep Viseth company, Sovlin. She's a guest, and she's not dangerous. You can't be questioning our judgment and poking your nose where it doesn't belong. I'm tired of you treating the Oxal like genuine people, I spat. They're not. You know what? Either you sit and talk with Vicent like an adult, or I have you charged with insubordination, you pick. As if I'd ever care what a Grey has to say, my decision is self-evident. Zhao tapped his chin. Do you think the Orcs are all evil? Of course I do. You humans can't even say that word. What the Dominion done is evil, though. But that's why they're sapient. It takes intention and knowledge to be malicious. Animals just exist, unbeholden to our military. The capacity for good and evil are adjacent to one another. Oh, I get it. You think you see yourselves in them. They are way different. Humans might have had savage outliers in your past, but it wasn't your whole fucking society. That's the problem with outliers. Left unchecked, you realize one day that they've become your whole society in plain sight. I opened my mouth to argue, but my treacherous thoughts turned to how easily the Federation ensnared countless societies in the web of lies. Our entire society was disingenuous, and the loudest voices all had called to slaughter the peace-seeking humans. Secretary General Zhao's words boasted a conviction of truthfulness, and Carlos's old lesson from the Battle of Silas rang in my ear. That's the relief that makes monsters of us all. Nobody has empathy for someone that's too unalike. When the dots connected before my eyes that the Oxal had been in mass being convinced that aliens weren't people, I couldn't deny it fit with the true evil. The humans viewed the Grey's trajectory as knowing purposeful decline into depravity. Where I wanted to find a monster beyond comparison, I saw the Federation mirrored. Both parties were to blame for what happened to my family, and for that, they were irredeemable. I hated that I'd served for years beneath the Federation's banner, fighting for their causes. As much as I loathed the carnivorous creatures in the cell, perhaps the Orcs were once capable of slight semblance of civilization since their decline had to start from something that wasn't this abominable. The Colchians contacted those demons as sapiens, and by Noconus' own admission, starved them soon after. Maybe Viseth is capable of restraining her bloodthirsty instincts, because unlike the humans, Arxel certainly possessed those. Isif was drooling, and the brutality in the Grey's mess hall on that cattle ship. Zhao pointed a hand at the table. We want peace. Make your choice. Be a part of the vision, or refuse, and help the Federation and Dominion keep us in a cycle of death. Tyler seemed surprised, as I gave the ultimatum a genuine consideration. The ancient Arxel had returned to its spot at the table, watching me with an unblinking stare that seemed to x-ray my skeleton. Isip's pupils darted between me and Viseth, perhaps regretting relinquishing a goge of prey to fatten itself up. No doubt both greys had cued in on my vulnerable areas and the fleshiest organs the second I stepped into the room. There was no depth of emotion when I peered into those terrible eyes, unlike when I gazed into our cells from my jail cell. The Arxal was soulless predators incapable of kindness. Their exteriors had zero cues that didn't scream cold-blooded killing machine. Still, as suicidal as it seemed on an instinctual level, the debt I owed the UN compelled me to comply with Zal's urgings. My feet shuffled towards the table hesitantly, feeling instinctive disgust and apprehension swell within my chest. Every neuron summoned the impulse to run away from the ravenous beast, who I couldn't hope to be best in my arms still chained. Viseth drummed a claws on the table. Your visit was most insightful, Isif. I'd like to speak to Solid alone, and not while being watched by some zoo exhibit. I do not know the zoo word. Is that the term the human lexicon? Is it asked. No, it's more of them, like all my other words. Since your language has been dead for many centuries, my knowledge is negligible. I must research the zoo concept. Perhaps my human friends can aid me. I'll leave you to be, Viseth. The chief hunter departed from the observation door it came from with Zal, while the ancient Arxor looked mistrustfully to the modern predator that had schooled me. Then again... I supposed I was being foolish to assign any emotion to a Grey's countenance. However, it was an undeniable fact that Viseth waited for Isif to be out of earshot to address me directly. 
the carnivore gestured for Tyler to retake his seat and attended to the playing cards that it had abandoned. The blonde human watched me with disbelieving eyes, relaxing his posture for the first time since I barged in. I can't begin to express my shock, waking up to find the genocidal Northwest Block 1, and that the galaxy sees my entire race as people eating monsters, Ryseth hissed. We were fascinated by the idea of aliens. I guess Batman has bred out all the curiosity too. Your behavior is unhinged, Sovlin, but I agree that these arcs are all beyond saving. They are no longer recognizable, no longer people. I recoiled at how smooth and reproachable the gray speech was. How could your society ever have a meaningful differences from today? For starters, we cared about each other. Social and non-social arcs all managed different roles in society, being on opposite ends of the spectrum, but we respected and the contributions of both types. At least in my nation. The Northwest Block wanted to destroy the Morvum Charter, though, and we feared a war would kill us all. That might have been better than losing to those megalomaniacs. I am so unspeakably horrified by everything the humans say that we've done since then. Why would you care? Because they made thinking people cattle and wiped out entire societies. So many needless deaths, whole generations born into war, and no freedom of expression. Betterment has become so comically villainous with the titles and hunting obsessions that it's not even funny. They didn't use those titles back in your day. No, your savageness, Tyler commented. They would have been a mockery if they did. What's admirable about not landing a clean kill, choosing cruelty over honor? Anyway, I got abducted by the Fossil on a mission to Kysium, a neutral state of the block invaded in their quest for power. I was enlisted as a soldier against those bastards, and I wanted to stop them from hurting innocent civilians, not watch them carry out atrocities in the stars. I struggled to meet the beast's eyes. Arcs or hunters ate my daughter alive. I offer my sincerest condolences. It must have been a wretched thing to go through. I'll have you know that I would never do anything like that. The arcs around you would never commit such vile murders, because it is unthinkable. It must baffle you that we could ever be anything else after witnessing such a graphic and personal atrocity. This is a nightmare of epic proportions to me too. Imagine how you would feel binding your own species in such a diabolical strait centuries later. Even with the gravelly register, the content of the beast's words seemed more like a human speech pattern than that of the terrorizing predator. It was worlds apart from Koth or even Isif. I would have never imagined that an Arxor could put such an eloquent, civilized sentences together. Deciding to humor the carnivore, I engaged in a thought exercise. If Gojits went to hunt the races in the Federation in a gruesome fashion, I would feel like ten times greater of a monster than when we were revealed to be omnivores. What could be more appalling than seeing your species reduced to mindless, hated savages? With its worst members from your time in charge. I couldn't bear to see the Gojis committing such heinous acts. I shared a glance with Tyler and picked up the flash of agreement in his eyes. The human had wanted me to empathize with the Ox's plight. I'd mourn what my species used to be, Viseth. I imagine that's what you're doing. The predator lowered her reptilian eyes. Yes, I suppose I am. Against all odds, I'd survived one Arxor's jaws and was engaged in a decent conversation with another. A part of me wondered if things could have been different had savagery not overtaken their entire society. Could carnivals have conducted themselves like any other species? The humans had seen something more than malicious monsters from the onset, and with Viseth slashing down on my preconceptions, it was tough to claim the primates didn't have a case. For the first time in my life, I spotted a tinge of sapience in the galaxy's original predators. End of chapter. There is a new legend on the horizon. Blueberry Cat has taken the T6 Patreon spot. Thank you very much, and I am sure that I speak for everyone when I say that. I would just like to thank our T5 members. Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Dregzoon WRE, Blueberry Cat, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster 177 and Leslie 517. Thank you very much.